Welcome to another DDMT tutorial. In this video, we're going to show you how to offset your magnetometer data without a calibration. To get started, let's open up DDMT. Gonna load in some wild dog data. Let's bring in the drawing window. This would replace the mag correction you would do with your calibrated data to produce a 2DO. There's two ways we can manually correct our magnetometer data, but let's go over the possible causes. So the obvious one is you forgot to do a calibration for whatever reason it can happen. It's understandable. Uh, things don't always go to plan on the field. Now a calibration makes life a lot easier and it improves the quality of data, but if your calibration has been forgotten, it's not the end of the world. Let's just briefly touch on your time offset. So you won't have a time offset if you don't have a calibration. So then you need to use either the daily diary on time or another known time, for example, the time the device was attached. And realistically, depending on how accurate your times were, these two actions, for example, switching on the daily diary and attaching the device aren't very clear within the data. So you're unlikely to have a second by second accuracy level for time. Another reason you might need to do a manual magnetometer correction is wherever you took your calibration, something has upset the data output so that when it's actually on the animal, your mag data is not sitting on the sphere as, you, as you'd like. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get your data to fit on the M-sphere best you can without that calibrated data. We can undertake the normal automated correction, but we're gonna try and look for some data that picks up a number of the orientations. So this usually happens during deployment. So if we begin to search through our data, but while we do this, we show the 3D panel and initiate magnetometer correction, it will show us the current state of the data on the left side you can see that some of the data currently is covering quite a few of the orientations. Now, the best case scenario is you want to limit this data to a minimum. What I'm trying to say is you can't just select the whole data from the whole file because your correction might take too long and actually might result in DDMT crashing. So it's not a plausible solution. So we need to select quite a few pieces of data to undertake the mag correction. If I just begin to scroll through where the data readings begin to make significant differences or noise, we can begin to bookmark this so that we can select a number of bookmarks to be used for our mag correction. So I'm going to use the left and right mouse buttons together to bookmark that section. And once I've bookmarked it, that will appear also in the center showing you the data that's going to be processed. We move across to more noise here. We can bookmark this also. Go through and keep bookmarking sections, I think. Are worthy. Okay, so although my two spheres look quite similar, actually, if you look at the amount of data I've bookmarked, that's got to be around less than a fifth of the whole data in my drawing at the moment. Once you've done that, you can then select each bookmark using the left alt and right click function and do this on each bookmark and you can select all the bookmarks. Now there clearly seems to be some outliers here, so I'm gonna try and deselect them. I think it was in the first bookmark, so if I deselect them, I might take them out. Now we can just run the mag correction as we would with our calibration. So a left click to center, and then another left click to finish the ellipsoid correction. 
that should be complete. Now, if we go back to initiate the magnetometer correction, we could just have a look. And actually, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. But sometimes you don't have that data available. You don't have this data where a number of the orientations have been accounted for and you can really make do. Sometimes you have to use, for example, the data on the animal. So I'm gonna reload up the same data set and show you another method of offsetting your magnetometer data. Now, when you're using animal data to offset the mag, you cannot correct for the ellipsoid. So all we're gonna be trying to do is center that mag data. And even though the ellipsoid improves the quality of the data greatly, it's not the be all and end all. So just centering the data is extremely useful and well worth doing. So I've loaded up the data again, bring the drawing across. And let's get quite far into the data where it's just animal data. It's always best to find an active part because then at least you'll have some of the orientations on the animal's field. Okay, here's a nice piece of active data. We're gonna show 3D again and initiate that magnetometer correction. But we're not going to actually undertake the correction automatically. We're gonna do it manually ourselves as you'll see. But it gives us a good idea of how far off that data is sitting off the M sphere. As you can see, it only covers, say, a third of the sphere. It's quite far off. We're going to use the intuitive 3D controls so that we are viewing the data perfectly above one of the axes. And this will make more sense when I get it in the right orientation. So here, I just want to see the Z in blue and the X in red. So I'm looking perfectly above the Y. Does that make sense? Then we're gonna to go to mags off DD orientation. And on the left here, we can adjust these values to move our mag data. It's unfortunately a case of trial and error. Now, I'm quite familiar with the data, so I can undertake this maybe quicker than you can, but it's just a question of taking your time and finding what you think is the best values. So the Z looks like it's quite far off. So I'm gonna go for minus 1500, then click set using above values, and it should move our data. See, moved it along. It needs to be more, so I'm gonna go for minus 2000, And it's just a question of doing this and we can do the x-axis also here. So that needs to come up a little bit. So maybe 500. And we just trial and error till we get it as central as we can. I'm happy with x and z for now. Let's change this orientation so that we are looking down on one of the other axes. That looks good. And just rotate it a bit. And we need to take the Y down quite a bit. And it's another case of trial and error. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, as you can see, it's still quite oval shaped, but at least it's sitting on that sphere better than it was before. Um, the data is a lot more normalized. And there we have it. There we go. That's how to manually offset your mag using animal data. That covers manual ways to offset your magnetometer data without calibration.